Item number SCP-049 Object Class Special Containment Procedures SCP-049 is to be contained in a secure holding cell in research sector. SCP-049 is not to be removed from its cell unless approved by a level 2 or higher personnel, before which SCP-049 must be heavily sedated. Even so, at such times SCP-049 is to be accompanied by two two armed guards and guided by an iron collar, secured to two two iron poles 2M in length, and held firmly by two two level 1 or higher personnel while in transit. Any experiments performed on SCP-049 are to be conducted inside of specifically prepared rooms see document 042-D318. SCP-049-S cell should be monitored at all times via a security camera. Should any abnormal behavior occur, doctor is to be alerted at once. Description SCP-049 is humanoid in appearance, standing at 1.9m tall and weighing 95. 3 kilograms. However, the Foundation is currently incapable of studying its face and body more fully, as it is covered in what appears to be the garb of the traditional plague doctor. From 1516th century Europe This material is actually a part of SCP-049-S body, as microscopic and genetic testing show it to be similar in structure to muscle, although it feels much like rough leather, and the mask much like, ceramic. It was originally discovered in, England, by local police. Mobile Task Force Redacted responded to a suspected outbreak of data expunged. All civilians within a 5 km radius were given Class A amnestics as part of the initial containment procedure. SCP-049 does not speak C Addendum A1, although it seems to understand English perfectly well, and is completely docile until it tries to perform surgery. SCP-049's touch is invariably lethal to humans. After contact with SCP-049-S hand S, the victim hereafter referred to as SCP-0492 suffers data expunged and dies within. SCP-049 will then attempt to kill all humans it can see in a similar manner, supposedly to avoid interruption, before returning to SCP-0492. It produces a bag made of data expunged containing scalpels, needle, thread, and several vials of an as yet unidentified substance, from somewhere within its body research has been unable to. Locate these tools when inside of SCP-049 through X-ray and similar techniques and begins dissecting SCP-049-2, as well as inserting various chemicals into the body. After approximately 20 minutes, SCP-049 will sew SCP-049-2 back up and become docile once more. After a period of a few minutes, SCP-049-2 will resume vital signs and appears to reanimate. However, SCP-049-2 seems completely without higher brain functions, and will wander aimlessly until it encounters another living human. At that point, SCP-049-2's adrenaline and endorphin levels increase to approximately 300-300% as it attempts to kill and any human beings it can find, before returning to its mindless state and wandering until it comes across more humans. At this stage, termination with extreme prejudice is allowed. Failure to enforce this protocol Detailed autopsies of SCP-049-2 have found several unusual substances along with usual substances in large amounts within the bodies, including data expunged. However, several have yet to be identified. Researchers with level 3 or higher authorization, refer to Addendum C-1. Addendum A1 SCP-049 spoke for the first time today, 12620, addressing Drive. A full account of the conversation is attached. Interviewed SCP-049 Interviewer Doctor Forward SCP-049 randomly began speaking with no obvious provocation en route to a testing facility. Doctor was recording notes at the time on a handheld microphone. Irrelevant data has been omitted. SCP-049 What is this place? Drive what? It's a labo there is a loud crash here, from doctor dropping the recording device in shock. SCP-049A Laboratory? It is quite marvelous. 
I now find it no wonder I've seen so few victims of the disease in here. Drive Y.E. You see, I'd thought you incapable of speech. I'm somewhat startled you, um, can. SCP-0490, my, yes, good sir. I simply prefer not to. Most victims of the disease are quite melancholy and do not react at all well to conversation. I have seen you several times now, and have not detected the disease in you, therefore I assume you are also a doctor. Drive yes, actually. Call me redacted but, what disease are you talking about? SCP-049-Y, good doctor, the Great Pestilence. What else? Drive Great Pesty. Oh, the plague. Should have seen that coming. But, no one here is infected, I can assure you. SCP-0490, good doctor, I can assure you, the pestilence is here, and I can sense it. It is my duty in life to rid the world of it. My cure is most effective. Drive your cure. Your cure has cost us hundreds of lives. Your cure is faulty. SCP-049, good doctor, my cure is most effective. SCP-049 lapsed once again into silence, and no further attempts to make it speak were effective. Closing statement, we managed to get our tests done for that day, trying to figure out what causes it to perform surgery, or, more accurately, what it detects as the pestilence. So far, research has shown us no correlation between any of the D-class personnel it has performed surgery on. We're still working on it. Drive. Addendum C1 Level 3 Authorization Required on 42620 SCP-049 Managed to Break Containment During the roughly 5-minute period in which it was unsupervised, it came into contact with SCP. Upon being detained, SCP-049 was very calm and amiable. Since this time, however, SCP-049 has been shown to be much more talkative leading up to and performing surgery. I don't know what 049 and that damned mask talked about, but he seems much happier overall. He no longer seems to simply sit and mope around in his cell, and several staff have claimed to hear him humming old church hymns. In addition, in the moments leading up to performing surgery, he has started talking, apparently trying to comfort his victim. Claiming that he is the cure, among other things. The focus of our research has been shifted towards finding out what the hell he and Redacted talked about during their little chat. Drive. <laughs>